nowadays it's common to make HTTP calls from within your Java code. Let's say architecture is based on microservices, then one service can call the other service using HTTP. If you're creating an Android application, which is Java code again, you might want to use HTTP to call the server to get the data or to save the data. Or maybe you're using one of the cloud APIs, which are increasingly HTTP enabled. In that case also from within your Java code, you might want to use HTTP to reach out to the cloud APIs. You can make all these calls using retrofit, which is one of the popular HTTP libraries. Let's see how would we go about it. Let's say we have two microservices, both made with Spring Boot. And on the left, we have our own service. And on the right, we have a quote service. As the name suggests, its job is to just give out the quotes. So in this case, it is running on this localhost 8080 port. And if we have this path of a slash quote, it's going to give us a random quote. And our job is to make this HTTP call from within our own service. So the first obvious step is to just add the required libraries in our POM XML. And then we have a set of steps to follow. The first step is to create an interface. This interface represents what paths are available on the target service that we want to hit. So in our case, our code service just has one path, one URL, which it allows, and that URL is slash quote. So we are going to use this slash quote using this annotation called get. This get tells retrofit to make get calls instead of post calls. The name of the method can be anything. It doesn't matter. And the return type is always this class called call. This class is a retrofit class, which is of type, which we are expecting from the response. So when we make the HTTP call of quote, we are expecting the quote in the form of a string. And that is why here we'll say this call is of type string. So, so far straightforward, just create an API service of all the paths of our target service. The next step is to create a retrofit client. This is the actual HTTP client, which is going to make the HTTP calls for us. So we'll use the builder to create the client. We'll set the URL of the target service. So in this case, the service is on localhost 8080. We're going to add a converter factory. This is the factory used by retrofit to convert the responses into the type that we need. So in our case, we need the response type to be as a string. Enable that, we need to use this scalars factory. And in the end, we'll just build that client. And once we have this client, we can store it anywhere and keep reusing for making multiple HTTP calls. We need not build this client multiple times. We in the next step, we're just going to add those two things that we did. The first was creating an interface. Second was building the client. Now we're going to combine the two. We're going to ask this client to create an implementation of the interface that we created. Retrofit will return us an implementation, which we can use to make the actual HTTP calls. And now that Retrofit has created the service for us, we can directly call the method on that interface as we do in the Java code. So in this case, we had this method called quote, which we can directly call on this service. Though this is not going to return us a response directly because it has not made the HTTP call yet. It's going to return us a retrofit class called call. To make an HTTP call, we have to use this method called execute. And this will actually make retrofit do the HTTP call and return back the response. Once we have the response, we'll just call dot body on it to extract the body of the response, which in our case is just a quote. So these are five simple steps that we used to make an HTTP call from our Java code. We created the service which had the path that we want to call and the return type. We created the client which had the target host and the port, as well as the ability to convert of our return types. We asked Retrofit to create an actual implementation of that interface for us, called our method of the interface to get the representation of an actual call. And then we executed that call and extracted the response out of it. So that's a positive or a successful response, but we are not guaranteed of a successful response all the time. You might get a 500 error or a different error and not just a 200 successful response type. And to handle those errors is also very easy in retrofit. So in the previous code, we used a representation of a call 
use the execute method to actually make the HTTP call and we got the body out of the response. This can be split into two lines. One is to actually do the execution and then from the return type, which is a response to get the body out of it. This response, in addition to giving the body of the response has other methods. You can ask it whether the response was successful. That is whether the return type was HTTP code 200. If yes, you can extract the body and you know that the quote is returned. If the response is not successful, that means there was some other error and you can get that HTTP error code using this method called code. Now let's look at how we can make synchronous or asynchronous calls using retrofit. So when we use the execute method on the call, it will actually go out and do the IO operation and make the HTTP call to the other service. If the service is slow or even if it takes few hundred milliseconds, for that much amount of time, this whole thread is going to block. And that is what we call synchronous call. But sometimes you don't want the thread to block. You want it to keep going. And in that case, we have to use this concept of callbacks. So we'll still use the representation of a call here. And instead of calling execute, we'll call the method NQ. The NQ method requires an object. So we'll create an anonymous inner class, which extends callback. And in this callback, we have to implement two methods what to do in case of a successful response and what to do in terms of a failure. So for successful response, we'll just extract the code because that's all we want. And for a failure response, we can maybe retry or in this case, we are just logging the error. The unsuccessful response that we spoke about earlier was about a different HTTP codes. While this failure is about the network failure. So this failure will be called if retrofit was not even able to reach the target service, which could be in terms of a timeout or some network error. So our code of positive response still needs to handle all the HTTP codes. And that is why we'll change the code to this. So we'll still say if the response is successful, take the code. And if it's not successful, then extract the HTTP error code. So in this case, the retrofit was able to call the target service, but target service had some issue and it returned an incorrect response. And in this case, the retrofit was not able to reach the target service at all. Let's say the API also requires some parameters to be passed. So in this case, we can say, get me the code, which is of type funny and which has a rating of four. So it requires these two parameters of type and rating. How do we incorporate that in our retrofit? So in the interface where we had this slash quote, we'll just add two parameters here and we'll have the annotation of at the rate query. So the first parameter required is type and the second parameter required is rating. When we are going to actually make the call, now we'll pass in the parameters with which we want to actually make the HTTP call. And whatever values we send here, automatically behind the scenes, it will append it as a parameter. And similarly, in addition to adding parameters, it is possible that the API path itself is dynamic. So let's say the code service also exposes an API where you can ask quotes for a particular author. So in this case, if you say, get me the quote of Richard Feynman, it'll give us one of the quotes of this scientist. If you have used Spring Boot MVC, it is the same as using dynamic paths there. We'll have a particular string in curly braces and we'll have the same string here with an annotation of at the rate path. Argument will essentially replace it in the actual path and make the HTTP call for us. And the last topic we should cover is about converting a response, which is in the form of a JSON. So let's say that quote service has another API called full quote. When this API is called, it will return a quote, but in this case, it will not return a string. Instead, it will return an entire quote in the form of a JSON string. So in the interface, of course, we'll change the path to full quote. And now instead of return type being string, we'll just have the return type of the class that maps to that JSON. We'll still create the retrofit client. We'll still give the same URL, but one another change is instead of using the scalar factory, this time use JSON factory. We also have a Jackson factory. So these factories are responsible for converting the JSONs into the Java objects for us. This time when you call the service, we don't have to do anything. It will directly map the response to this object. So these are the basic features of retrofit, but it is capable of quite a bit more.
so that's it for this video thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one bye